Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video we are going to be looking at TCP dump. Now I did mention uh, that I will be trying to complete the entire um, you know, traffic sniffing uh, and capturing packet capturing series where we looked at Wireshark and uh, we went through all of that and now it's time to look at some co command line uh, based utilities, uh, especially the packet capturing ones. So in this video we're going to be looking at TCP dump. All right, now before we get started, uh, apologies once again for the lack of videos in the past week. As I mentioned, I've been working on uh, on a lot of things, you know, trying to get uh, new ideas out there, trying to trying to see how I can improve the channel. And uh, for those of you who are requesting hack the box videos, those are also coming. Uh, I had an issue with my account where I could not actually register for a VIP account. A very, very small issue, but it's sorted now. So uh, you should be getting videos uh, in addition to the Volnhub videos that uh, also are scheduled to be coming out every Friday. So without, uh, without uh, out of the way, let's get started. So uh, for those of you wondering what TCP dump is, TCP dump is essentially a command line based packet capturing utility and allows us to sniff, uh, capture and monitor any type of traffic on a network really, really easily. Now, some of you might be afraid of command line tools, like uh, especially when I mention tools like TCP dump, because if you've ever used it, you know that it really is something that you, many people for uh, for beginners they really don't know how to get control of and they prefer graphical user interfaces because they understand what they're dealing with. With a utility like TCP dump, it's very important to understand the syntax because if you understand the syntax, then you'll understand a lot about how to use the tool. All right, so TCP dump allows you to sniff traffic from almost all layers of the, of the OSI model. So all the way from layer one to layer seven, which is excellent. And you can pretty much do whatever you want with the packets you've captured. You can store them and analyze them later in Wireshark, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll show you that in a second. All right. So as I mentioned, TCP dump is a really reliable tool, especially if you're not in a graphical user environment and you're working in, for example, a VPS, uh, which is a virtual private server, or you're working professionally in an environment where you don't have your own computer with you and you're simply SSHing into a box. It can be really useful to have a, a tool like TCP dump, uh, you know, in your arsenal. So, uh, if you, uh, you pre pre pretty much a lot of you guys actually brought this issue up and you're wondering, well, what if I'm actually trying to hack uh, in, into a box or you're, you're doing a, a, you know, CTF challenge and uh, you want to launch a traffic analyzer or a traffic capturing tool within the box that you've essentially got into and you don't have a VNC session where you don't have a graphical user interface, uh, then this is where TCP TCP dump comes into place. All right, so let's get started with TCP dump. Uh, now, by default, it comes pre-installed in Kali and Parrot as far as my knowledge serves me. Uh, but again, please do let me know if it's available in other uh, penetration testing distributions like uh, Kane Enable or Kane, as it's called, uh, and um, a few others. But uh, that being said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is simply type in TCP dump and we want to open our trusty help menu. All right, now the help menu in TCP dump, I have to admit is not really helpful, okay? Now, of course, you can use any of the other options here to specify any specific uh, uh, any specific type of functionality that you want. But as I've mentioned, the most important things that we're gonna be looking at is the file that are displayed in the help menu is the file, the, inter uh, the interface here, and a verbose, if I can find it, which is a lowercase v. Uh, if it's not here, don't worry. I'll get to that in a second. So really, uh, the help menu isn't extremely helpful, which is kind of sad because this is an extremely powerful tool. I use it more than I use Wireshark. I actually use Wireshark for analyzing the traffic that I've captured. I'll show you that in a second. All right. So uh, uh, let's get started with a very basic uh, with a very basic scan. So. Uh, for good practice, I always recommend specifying the, the interface that you want to use. So I, you know, I can say I want to use Ethernet 0, which is what I'm using right now. Or I can say I want to use LAN 0, which requires me to have a uh, monitor mode uh, uh, enabled on my wireless device. So that means if it was activated, I would have to use LAN 0 mon. And uh, hopefully you know how to do that. So in my case, uh, you know, uh, judging or giving the fact that Ethernet is promiscuous and I am connected to a switch here, I should be able to be okay, you know, using Ethernet that way. It's always important to specify the interface that you're using. The next thing that you might want to do if you are analyzing it on the fly or on the go, I would recommend that you use the verbose option here. All right, so that will essentially print out all the, the, the traffic that's being uh, captured. 
now if you'll see most uh, network penetration testers really don't penetration testers really don't use this they prefer to save it into a file we'll get to that very very shortly all right so let's talk about filters now so let's say uh, I want to, you know, scan for specific data because if I simply hit enter, you can see it's going to capture a wide variety of data right over. You can see and you pretty much can understand what's going on, where it's coming from, what computer it's coming from, where it's going, uh, what the source is, what the destination is. So, yeah, it's crazy to monitor traffic like this. And this is where beginners really get confused. So hopefully I can clarify that right now. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this and let me just clear that up. And we'll open up the previous command here. And now we talk about filters. So TCP dump also has filters. And the great thing is that they are very similar to the ones that we saw in, um, in, in Wireshark. So, uh, the, the great thing is as well is they're not sorted out in terms of display and capture. Essentially, what's going to be displayed can be denoted by the verbose option. And your capture filters are again, as I've just mentioned, we're, that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So. Uh, remember, we are capturing everything in regards to the filter. So it's very important that you realize that it will not capture all the data in the background as well. That's the difference between TC TCP dump. All right. So let's say I want to start capturing data from a host. Let's start off with the host uh, filter, which, you know, you can specify a host right over here. So 192.168.1.1, we can say, for example, and I hit enter. And then any traffic in regards to that host is going to be monitored. So uh, that's one example. Of course, then you can move on. And I've just opened a web page on my other computer here to bbc.com. Let's see if that actually, uh, if we did get the ARP request first. And you can essentially monitor that right over here where it gives you the, um, well, uh, let me just see if I can find that here. Um, let's see if we can actually find the response here. Uh, well, this is actually where Wireshark comes in into play and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so let's see anything here from the IP. Uh, let me just see if I can get that right now. And anyway, uh, I'll get to that in a second. I don't want to confuse you guys too early. All right. So let me just clear that up and uh, we'll go into TCP dump one more time. So that is the host filter. All right. We can also use google.com. All right. So, or we can say bbc.com. For example, that's a very simple example. So again, you know, I can refresh and that is limited to the host that you specify. Okay. And of course, this is not going to respond anyhow because we're specifying a host outside our range. Um, so let me just clear that out. And that is how to, to use the host filter. Now let's look at something a bit more interesting. All right. Let's look at the source and destination uh, IPs that you can specify on the network. So let me open up the command that we're using. So again, I usually like keeping this a standard where you, you use TCP dump, you specify the interface you're working with. And then you specify the verbose option. That's if you want the data to be displayed to you. Uh, again, I'll get to that in a second. So when you're talking about the source and destination filters, as I mentioned, these are very similar to the ones that you'll find with Wireshark. So you have SRC and you have the DST for destination. So in this case, let's say we are looking for traffic with a destination IP address of uh, the Kali operating system, which let me just display that to you so you guys can actually confirm that it is 192.168.1.107. So this uh, so this computer right over here, let me just clear that up and we can get started. All right. So instead of using a host, we're going to say uh, verbose everything and we're going to say we want uh, traffic in regards or any traffic that has a destination IP address uh, of 192.168.1.107. Now, of course, you can replace that with a source, whatever you want, whatever traffic you're trying to capture. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to start listening for any traffic with the destination IP address of 192.168.1.107. So let me just refresh this BBC page here. And there we are. We can see we've got all the traffic. Then there's quite a bit in regards to the API that it's collecting. And you can specify that. I'll explain the filters in a second. So you can see it's getting all that data that uh, of course, has the destination uh, IP, a destination uh, IP. That's very important, not a destination port. All right. So then uh, that is how to capture or how to specify a, des a destination and source port. And again, you can also change that to an SRC or the source port, uh, the sorry, the source IP. And we'd enter. And as you can see, this, this data is very different from the one that we received previously because this is where the uh, the source is being uh, the the source IP is 192.168.1.107. All right, so I'm going to stop that right now, and we'll clear that up. All right, so now uh, let's look at combining filters. All right, this is very important now 
because uh, as I mentioned, or even previously with Wireshark, combining is where you get the real magic of any traffic or packet capturing utility. All right, so let's say I want to capture any traffic or all traffic between my uh, between this computer uh, and the access point uh, or my access point. So I can say TCP dump Ethernet zero, and we want to you know we want to verbose the output here, uh, or we want a verbose output, and we can say the de the destination is going to be 192.168.1.107. Now, when we talk about combining filters. Uh, with TCP dump, very similar as I mentioned to uh, Wireshark, we use the and or not expressions. So we can say and we want to capture the traffic uh, between uh, and so we're saying uh, the destination of 192.168.1.17 and uh, the source of 192.168.1.1, which is my default gateway or my access point, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to start capturing that traffic. So let me just again reload this uh, BBC page. I'll be using this as, as the example just to show you that the traffic actually does work. And as you can see, there you are. If I can just stop this here, you can just see right over here. We have all the plugins, of course, from the website loading up as well. Uh, but again, when you talk about analyzing this, I'll show you that in a second. All right. So please do have patience as I actually go through all the filters. So that is how to combine. All right. Now, when you talk about scanning the entire network, which is what something a, a lot of you guys actually talk about with TCP dump, it's very easy to specify this. All right. So again, let, let, me, let me just write out, uh, out the command for you. So TCP dump and uh, I can specify again uh, the interface here. Always good practice to do that. Ethernet zero. We want to verbose the output here. And uh, now to specify the entire network or your subnet, we use the net command and then we specify the subnet that we, we are using. So I can say 192.168.1.0 uh, and 24 for the entire range. That's, you know, specifies that's a medium sized network range where it goes uh, 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 up to 255 IP addresses. So I'm going to hit enter. And again, that's going to start capturing traffic from all of these, uh, from all devices on this network range. And I just reloaded bbc.com on another computer that's right next to me. And hopefully we're able to analyze this. Um, so let's actually stop the traffic here. Uh, right over here. And we have a lot of data being captured. And for some reason, uh, yeah, there we are. I did stop it. All right. So we have TCP data captured right over here. And hopefully I can actually show you how to capture TCP data in a second. So uh, there's a lot of traffic being captured. And again, this is where a tool uh, that displays this type of data really well, like Wireshark comes into play. I'll get to that in a second. But anyway, uh, I'll get to all of this in a second now. And now it can be analyzed really well because for me, uh, what I usually do is I use TCP dump for, for the capture and then I use uh, a graphical user interface uh, like Wireshark, you know, to analyze the traffic or to actually go through it in a more accurate type of way. All right. So uh, that is essentially how to scan data coming from the entire network or, you know, a specified range. Now, when you're talking about protocol and port specific filters, this is uh, where TCP and ports come into play. So let me just show you a simple command here. So t TCP dump. All right. And we're going to specify again the in, the the uh, interface. Sorry. And we're going to verbose and we're going to say TCP. That is a protocol specific um, filter. So I can say TCP or UDP, whatever. So I'm going to say TCP and uh, and I can say I want all TCP data coming from the network range 192.168.1.0 and the range of 24, which, you know, is um, is a good way of specifying the entire range. And I'm going to hit enter. And again, it's going to start capturing all TCP data. That's very important. Remember, it's all the, the protocol that we have specified here is TCP. So it's only going to be uh, it's only be going to be going through that data or looking for TCP data. And as you can see, now the traffic is a little bit more standardized and we're getting uh, a little bit more accurate data in regards to what we want. All right. So we'll get to all of this in a second. So let me just clear this out. And uh, whoops, sorry about that, guys. Let me just clear that up. And now let's look at uh, port specific filters. We haven't looked at that. So again, the syntax for ports is, is divided really differently. So for example, I can run a simple command here or let me just open up the previous one. So I can say um, we can go for the entire network or just traffic uh, or just capture any data we want. And we can do that using the port 
uh, we can say we all only want traffic uh, that is uh, with the port uh, 80. So any traffic going and coming to, to the port 80. So we know with the source and destination, that's if you don't specify it. All right, so I'm gonna hit enter and this is on the entire, this is any tr traffic that can be captured. And of course, we're not gonna get a lot of that data. Even if I try and reload bbc.com here, uh, it really isn't going through any of those ports. So yeah, nothing special there. But however, this is where you get the real awesome uh, options in terms of filtering. And this is where you have your source port and your destination port. All right, so let, let me just show you that right now uh, uh, in, in a simple example here. So let's say I want to start capturing, um, uh, you know, HTTPS data or SSL, whatever you want to call it. So TCP dump uh, interface is Ethernet zero and we're verbosing the output here. And we're going to say, uh, we are going to say the source port is going to be port 443. Uh, yeah, source port is going to be 443. And uh, we want a destination of uh, 192.168.1.107. So we want to capture all data with a source port of uh, 443 and a destination IP of 192.168.1.107. So I'm going to hit enter. And for some reason, yeah, I did not specify my interface. I, specif I specified ETHO, not Ethernet zero. So I'm going to hit enter. Uh, let's reload uh, bbc.com. Hopefully this does work for us or I can open up another website here and voila there you can see uh, this is all uh, I all packets coming uh, well all uh, packets that have a source port of uh, 443 and a destination IP of 192.168.1.107 and the protocol as we we already know with port 443 is usually TCP as we already know. So we can see all the synax right over here. So uh, it's all going it's going through the entire process here and again it also has to look at all the other apis or all other websites affiliated with the website that you know th that your target is visiting etc etc so let me just close that and that is how to specify your uh your source port now you can also use your destination port remember if you're looking for protocol specific traffic so you know usually what i find is we have port 22 you know you can always specify traffic that way all right, so let us now talk about um, let us talk about good practice with TCP dump, which is something I've not talked about. So usually, what I would recommend around your capture or your display filters, whatever I I would prefer you call it a capture filter, I would recommend that you specify or you encapsulate it with quotation marks with single quotation marks. All right, so let's say I want to run the same. Uh, I want to run the same command that I did just before. So to do that, I simply put my, my capture filters within an encapsulated uh, quotation marks. All right. So I can put my command, uh, my filter in here. And this is good practice because it allows you to sift through what uh, your, your capture filters are. All right. So I'll say here, uh, we're looking for a source, sorry, a source port uh, of port 443. And again, we're using our operational, uh, our expressions right over here. So and or not. So, and uh, we are looking for a destination uh, IP of, uh, what, what what am I saying here? A destination of 192.168.1.107. And I'm going to hit enter. Good. All right. So I'm going to close, uh, I'm going to close the, 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 I'm going to close the capture filter now with a single quotation mark and I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it's going to run the same thing. And there we are, we can see that the traffic is going to be captured right over here. All right. And we can see that for some reason it's connecting to uh, an AWS server here, which is pretty much telling me that bbc.com has a load balancer set up. But anyway, that's uh, another video for a different time. And that is good practice in regards to your quotation marks right over here. All right. So let me just clear that up and let me talk about um, essentially saving traffic into a PCAP file. All right. This is very important. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Uh, and this is where uh, you're analyzing your traffic comes into play. So let's say I wanted to capture all TCP traffic. This is a very simple example. So TCP dump. And now instead of displaying the traffic to me, I want to save it in a PCAP file so I can analyze it uh, with, you know, traffic analyzers like Wireshark. So I can analyze the traffic in a real accurate way. So I can say TCP dump and we use the W command to write it out to a file. And I'm going to specify the, the, the location of which I want to save the PCAP file. So root, uh, root desktop. And I'm going to save it as traffic.pcap. Uh, and now I specify the interface, which is Ethernet zero. 
and um, we want to verbose or you can leave that out if you don't want to. And now I'm going to specify my capture filters right over here. So we are going to say I'm looking for, um, let's see, all TCP traffic. All right. So we're going to say TCP and uh, we're going to say the entire network range here, 192.168.1.0.24 and close that up. All right. So this is going to capture all the packets into a PCAP file. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to tell you right over here how many packets it's got. So you can see it's got three, six and nine now. And we're going to wait for that to capture quite a bit of data before we actually open it up in Wireshark. So let's wait for that. And we've got 54, 74. So let me close that now. So we use the control plus C command on your keyboard to stop the capture. And it's going to tell you 92 packets captured by uh, received by the filter and zero packets were dropped by the kernel. All right, so let me open that up with your uh, with Wireshark. So it'll be on my desktop right over here. I'm going to hit OK. And voila, we can see that it captured all TCP traffic on, uh, on, on, on the network. Sorry about that, guys. And if we just look at all the data right over here, we can see that we have uh, we have not specified anything special. So there you are. And now I can start analyzing the traffic that I want. So uh, we have an ACK right over here. And again, you can go ahead and say follow TCP stream. And as you can see the data is extremely comprehensive. You're capturing all the data that you would with a tool like Wireshark, except now you can capture it and then transfer it onto your, your computer and analyze the traffic there. And I can run another, we can run uh, other capture filters here. So I can say, for example, uh, I'm looking for a uh, source port. Uh, source port is, uh, what, sorry about that guys. So SRC port is 443 and the, DS, the destination is 192.168.1.107. And we're just gonna uh, hit enter and save it as traffic uh, one dot um, pickup and I'm gonna hit enter. And we're just gonna reload bbc.com because this is on this computer right over here. And hopefully now this gives us, yeah, there we are. we've got 23 packets. So I'm going to close or stop the capture and we're going to open, open up traffic one dot pcap here. So uh, there we are. And it opened up. Hopefully it doesn't open up two instances because I think I clicked it four times, which is weird. Uh, anyway, there you are. You have your synapse right over here. And if we look at the TLS data, you can go ahead and see you have your server. Hello. And let's see if we can see uh, these. Yeah, there we are. We have the certificate uh, exchange where it essentially exchanges the keys between your between the server and your browser. All right. So that's a very good that it captured that. Uh, let's look at some TCP data here uh, and we can, you know, again, follow the TCP stream. And of course, there we are. We have we can essentially go through some of the data here that was captured. Uh, let's see if we can get anything special yet. Yeah, nothing much right over here. And we have the ACK, the final ACK. If we follow this TCP stream, let's see if we're able to get anything there. Uh, nothing much. But anyway, uh, the purpose of this video was to show you how to capture, uh, how to capture data with TCP dump. All right. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.